Let's solve some GCSC physics practice questions on Waze. These questions are from OCR, however, they're applicable to all exam boards, including AQA, Edexcel, etc. Okay, well, let's have a look at the first multiple choice question. A student makes a wave in a ripple tank, and we have some distances here. So this entire distance is 24 centimeters. What is the wavelength of the wave? Okay, well, the wavelength is defined as the peak to peak distance. So the distance from here to there, so it's going to be one, two of them, three, four, five. So five of these distances are contained within the 24 centimeters. So the correct answer will just be 24 divided by five, which is 4.8 centimeters. Correct answer is C, as we can see. Next question, a cork floats on water and ripples move across the surface of the water. And which statement describes the motion of this thing? So A does not move. Well, that's got to be wrong. It moves in the same direction as the direction of the movement of the ripples. Well, they're going to the side. But this here is a water wave, which is a transverse wave. So that's not true. It moves sideways. That's also not true. In a transverse wave, the direction of motion is perpendicular to the direction of motion of the wave. So it's going to be moving either up or down along this line correct answer is D let's do one on uh, light as well we've got a little tricky question so a student uses a glass prism to split white light into different colors which statement describes the light in the prism so a blue light is reflected less than red light well the refraction depends on where the light so if there's no refraction the white line will just carry on in a straight line kind of along here I don't have a digital ruler but you can imagine this white light kind of carry on in a in a straight line well red light gets changed its direction a little bit and blue light gets its direction changed a lot more compared to red light. So the first statement is wrong. Now, the more something is refracted, the more the light actually slows down because it has a higher refractive index. Um, so the correct answer in this case is actually B. Blue light slows down more than red light because it is refracted more. Okay, next one. This question is about visible light. State one change that happens to light when it travels from water into air. Well, it is being refracted. Additionally, we could have scored that mark if we mentioned the speed, meaning the speed will increase, or its wavelength increasing as well. Okay, let's have a look at this diagram. Shows a ray of light from a fish in a container of water. Complete the ray diagram, show the path of the ray after it leaves the water. Include a normal line in your diagram. So I've switched programs here so that we can um, actually draw the, um, the line properly. The first thing that we need to do is just carry on with this ray. Let's see if I've I aligned it. Uh, almost let's try that again and um, once this ray strikes the surface it will refract so the first thing that we need to do is draw the normal which is at 90 degrees here's our normal I'm just gonna draw a little dotted line this is a lot easier on paper than on a digital whiteboard now because we're going into a less optically dense medium with a lower refractive index then this thing will bend away from the normal and it will kind of look like this Next one, the diagram shows three incident rays. Complete the diagram to show the scattered rays. So what actually happens is that a uh, light ray hits the surface of the fish and then it will get reflected. And the angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection. So I'm trying to include this rule like so where we have all, the, all of these three different um, rays. They all kind of get reflected in slightly different directions. Okay, next one, the fish appears red on the white light. Explain why the fish appears black on the green light. Well, if it appears black, this means that all of the green light has been absorbed 
and if it appears black as well uh, then no light or very little light is reflected Okay, next one. This one is about lenses. So a projector is used to create a large image of the object. Draw one more ray to show where the image is formed. Now one of the easiest ways to tackle this is to always uh, pick a line that goes through the center of the lens. And if it does, it will just go on completely undisturbed. Let's see if I can manage to do that on my digital whiteboard. So it's going to go kind of like this. Okay, well, this is where the image will actually be formed, where those two lines intersect. And uh, the image will be magnified and will also be inverted because this uh, kind of top bit gets reflected downwards and the image is produced uh, upside down with this being the image. Next one, the projector contains a white light source. Explain how this white light source can be used to get red light. Um, well, in order to do so, we're going to need a red filter and the red filter will actually absorb oh, my handwriting is not the best today will absorb uh, all wavelengths but red Next one, ultrasound waves can be used to create an image and um, ultrasound waves have a higher frequency than ripples on the surface of water. Describe another difference between ultrasound waves and the ripples of the surface of the water and explain our answers. Okay, now the first thing that comes to mind is that ultrasound is a type of sound. So ultrasound are and uh, let's just write it down that ultrasound um, ultrasound waves are longitudinal and that means that the oscillations of the particles are parallel to the direction of energy transfer Okay, next one, the graph shows the displacement against distance. Use the figure to determine the wavelength of this ultrasound wave. Okay, so the wavelength is, if it starts here, this here will be one complete wavelength. So it's going to be a little bit higher than 0.02. And then it's just two squares. And how many have we got? We've got 10 squares. Each of it is going to be 0.001. So this here will be an additional 0.002. Otherwise, um, we can just say that the wavelength will just be given by 0.002 and then 2 accounting for the extra two squares. Okay, next one, the speed of ultrasound is 4,500 meters per second. Calculate the frequency of the ultrasound wave. And they've even given us the equation to use. So we're gonna use the fact that the speed is frequency times wavelength. Okay, so let's rearrange for the frequency. I'm just gonna say that F is equal to the wave speed um, divided by the uh, wavelength. Now our speed is 4,500 meters per second. Divide that by the wavelength, which is what we found in the previous answer, 0 0.0022, 0 0.0022. Now that's gonna give us a, a pretty uh, large answer. It'll be 204554 dot something. But um, we need to give this up to um, two significant figures. And if we do that up to two significant figures, this thing here will be given by 2.0 times 10 to the power of six. So that's the answer we're gonna write in this box. 2.0 times 10 to the six hertz. Okay, next one, doctors can use ultrasound to measure the size of a person's kidney. Uh, okay, and then we've got a ultrasound scanner. 
we have the skin and then we have the kidney in here so complete the sentences using the words below so the ultrasound scanner is made from a solid ceramic material as the wave enters the body um, the speed will actually decrease because uh, there is some refraction happening as with um, any medium now with all of these changes the frequency actually remains totally constant so we're going to say here that it stays the same explain what happens to the ultrasound wave when it reaches the kidney well um, there will be some partial reflection and um, some partial absorption so the uh, strength of the signal will decrease because of a little bit will be absorbed but some of it will be um, reflected backwards and this happens at the front of the kidney but the back um, uh, a lot of ultrasound will be reflected from the back and that's how we'll know uh, what the image will look like so we can just say that ultrasound is reflected off the back of the kidney Now, uh, figure 19.2 shows the thickness of the uh, kidney, which is W. Um, explain how the ultrasound waves are used to measure W. Okay, so they, the, um, the device actually measures the time between re re reflections, measures the, measure the time between reflections. I'm going to call that T and the thickness w um, will be given by the speed of ultrasound because it's uh, just speed of the ultrasound times uh, the uh, times that time that has been measured um, but remember the time that you're measuring is for the wave to actually go here and then come back so what we need to do is actually divide that by two to get the right answer. So next one, a teacher uses water waves and a rubble tank to demonstrate transverse waves. And she takes measurements of the water waves. The frequency of the water wave is 0.5 Hertz. Calculate the number of water waves produced in five seconds. So 0.5 Hertz means 0.5 cycles or waves per second. So that's half a wave every second. So for five seconds, it will be 0.5 times five, which is just two and a half waves. The teacher increases the frequency of the water wave. Describe what happens to the speed and wavelength of the water waves. So for water waves, the speed remains unchanged. Remains unchanged. So this is very different to refraction, in which the speed changes. Um, and the wavelength, though, so because the frequency is increased, in order to keep the speed constant, the wavelength must decrease, like so. Okay, next one, a student tries to describe water waves in the sea. The water waves move up and down. The water particles move all the way across the surface of the sea. This means that the water moves in the direction of the waves. Part of his explanation is incorrect. Write an improved and correct description about the water waves in the sea. So the first thing that I'm going to tackle is that the particles move all the way across the surface of the sea. Uh, that's not true, so the particles uh, will only move or will move um, at a at 90 degrees to the direction of travel or the direction of energy transfer so we can correct that and that'll be one mark worth one mark okay the next one is that the water moves in the direction of the waves which is incorrect we've already uh, said that actually so what we're going to say is that energy, um, uh, the direction of energy transfer 
is in the direction of movement of the wave is in the direction of wave movement okay guys well i hope this was a very useful video let me know if you would like to see more uh, questions by topic in the meantime if you're feeling like revising waves i've covered the entire topic right over here and in just around 20 minutes or so you can cover the entire spec on it